So Whitmer observed that Elvis, along with Jesus and Coke, form a worldwide trifecta of words that, quote, need no translation to convey their meaning, end quote. The image of the Elvis impersonator, or tribute artist, is ubiquitous in today's society. There are currently at least 85,000 male and female Elvis tribute artists worldwide, and they provide the main economic stimulus in such towns as rural parks Australia, and as we've discovered undertaking this project, Tweed, Ontario. The Collingwood Elvis Festival, just a few hours drive from here, is the biggest Elvis festival in the world, and it draws approximately 120 tribute artists and 30,000 visitors to a town of 20,000 people in just this, past, uh, just this past July. And according to Gig Salad, there are over 110 Elvis tribute artists within driving distance of London, Ontario. <laughs> and you can find an Elvis show at practically every other weekend around London. In fact, we're going to one tomorrow night. So aside from um, the fact that Elvis tribute artists are a global phenomenon that support a diverse range of economic, social, and community activities, you might be thinking, why study Elvis impersonators? We began the study to have fun and in a lighthearted way, only to discover that we were much like our Elvi collaborators, who enjoy the playfulness and sense of carnival about their persona, but who really take it all quite seriously for a variety of reasons. And we found that this world has proven to be, to quote Doss, that there is in fact something quite playfully serious to be learned about the study of Elvis culture. We all know that music learning doesn't occur only in schools. In their work on the current international project entitled Creativity, Agency, and Democratic Research in Music Education, or CADRE, Westerlund et al. have argued that new phenomena such as karaoke, idol competitions, and online music learning communities, quote, express vast cultural changes in which people's free participation rather than passive consumption, consumption is central, end quote. And one of the primary aims of the Cadre project is to reconstruct music education through the lens of participatory democracy, specifically by examining experiences and expressions of agency in informal learning environments. Now, we're not affiliated with this project, but we support its mandate and suggest that one place to explore this question is by examining the musical experiences of those who engaged in music making and participation because of a desire to emulate, imitate, or pay tribute to a specific musical idol. With this in mind, we're here today to introduce a set of ongoing studies on Elvis tribute artists, ETAs as they're commonly called, who live in southern Ontario and the vibrant festival community that supports them here. In the 25 interviews that we've conducted over the last five months with ETAs and festival organizers, we found that Elvis and Elvising is uniquely supported in this area of the globe. Our research seeks to explore the intersection of musical skill acquisition, informal transmission, identity, and celebrity. And here, are, here were our initial objectives. We're going to document how these performers acquired their musical impersonation skills, understand how they delineate their own sense of musical and social identities from the music and social identity of their chosen celebrity model, understand how these performers continue to generate new musical dimensions and interpretations within the genre of performance practice premised on the musical template made famous by another, and support the support, understand the support and mentorship processes of the wider Elvis tribute artist community, which includes festivals. As is common in qualitative research, however, we added to our list of objectives as we engaged in ongoing data collection and analysis and began to uncover common, if unlooked for, themes so we came up with additional questions of, in which way do those who engage in learning to play musical tribute to their idols find unlooked for yet meaningful personal, social, professional, and musical engagements and fulfillities, fulfillment and, how has the study of what we had originally perceived of as a musical outlier in the spectrum of communities of music practices caused us to rethink music education and our own musical lives. 
We had originally envisioned one study focused on the self-reported learning perceptions and musical enactments of five Elvis tribute artists in Ontario, Canada. However, after interviewing only two participants, which we're going to discuss today as part of a snapshot of that original study, the whole thing grew. We realized we needed to include a second study on the role that festivals play in creating a space for mentorship, friendship, and professional development. And then we discovered intergenerational families of ETAs, which will be the focus of the third study. As we, and there will be a fourth one on female El Elvises, which we have also found. We will begin now with two brief biographies, and after this, we'll discuss emergent themes and finish with sociological implications. <laughs> 